Your first destination is the magnificent city of Olympia, home of the famous games. There you will meet the son of my old friend Pindar. His name is Tellus, and I am told that he is a great storyteller and athlete, a true Greek. Assist him in whatever he asks of you. Do this well, and he will help you in your quest. There you are, young bard. The Academy sent word you'd be coming. Unfortunately, I'm on my way to the arena. My father's stories will have to wait until after I've won the triathlon. I'll tell you what. My trainer got sick from some of those roadside tacos on the way here. Horrible things. Anyway, I'll need help if I'm going to win this thing. The competition includes three events. Wrestling, running, and discus throwing. Help me do well in all three events, and I will tell you all the stories you want to know. I'll be wearing this blue toga for all of the three events, just so you know who to root for, okay? See you inside. Okay, my young friend, the first event is wrestling. Help me beat my opponent by answering the questions correctly. Each time you answer right, I win a point. Each time you miss a question, he wins a point. The first one to earn five points wins the match, okay? Let's go! Kicking and eye gouging are considered fouls in modern Olympic wrestling. During a five-match tournament, a wrestler receives three fouls each match. How many fouls did he receive total? Modern Olympic wrestlers must be 17 years of age to compete. Ancient Greek wrestling had no such rule. If Prontus of Pylo stopped wrestling competitively when he was 42 years old and competed for half of his life, how many years did he compete? <laughs> Size and weight were an important part in ancient wrestling. If you know that there are 12 inches in a foot, and Marcus of Mycenae was 72 inches tall, how many feet tall was he? <laughs> Wrestlers worked up a hefty thirst while competing. If Tendonitis of Troy drank four liters of water each day for four days in a row, how much water did he drink altogether? <laughs> Upright wrestling took place in a sand pit called the scum. At the beginning of every day, the groundskeeper would replace one-fifth of the used oily sand with clean sand. If 50 bags were needed to fill the scum, how many bags did he replace each day? Many wrestling holds have been traced back to carvings and tombs in Egypt. If an archaeologist found 40 pictures in one tomb and 68 pictures in another tomb, how many pictures did he locate altogether? Okay, young bard, the next event I need your help with is the discus throw. The better you answer the questions, the farther I throw the disc. I have to beat my opponents five out of the ten throws to win, okay? Let's do it. Historians believe that the ancient people may have developed the sport of discus throwing from skipping flat stones on water. If Marcus of Mycenae skipped his stone 123 feet, and Hepicat of Delphi skipped his 144 feet, what was the total distance of both their throws? <laughs> to increase the strength in their arms, Throwers used haltiers or weights to build up their arm muscles. Tendonitis of Troy owns 80 pounds of weights that each weigh 5 pounds. How many weights does he own?
The discus thrower originated when the famous Greek Achilles offered a valuable ingot of iron to the man who could throw it the farthest distance. Dantocles of Demoni triumphed in this event seven times, winning ingots that each weighed three pounds. How many pounds of iron did he win? Only about 20 ancient discuses have been discovered by archaeologists. Some were forged from bronze or iron, while others were carved from marble. If an archaeologist found 10 discs and four of them were bronze, what percentage of the total number of discs uncovered were bronze? The first discuses were made by pouring liquid iron into scooped out holes in sand. If it took six pounds of iron to make one discus, how many pounds of iron would Damon of Propontis need to make twelve discuses? Okay, this is the last event. If we win this, the champion's wreath is ours. Answer the questions as quickly as you can. Be careful. My opponents run faster if you miss a question, and I want us to win. Let's go. If Artis of Athens ran the length of a 200-yard stadium three times the first day and two times the second day, how many yards did he run for both days? Runners' muscles need plenty of water in order to function properly. If Partis of Sparta ran nine races and needs to drink four liters after each race, how many liters must he drink? If it took a triplet two minutes to win the first race, seven minutes to win the second race, and 40 minutes to win the final race, how long did the three races take? Sportacles began training for the Olympics on his 12th birthday. By his 15th birthday, how many total months had he been training? In ancient Olympic Games, the long distance race was called the Dolichos. In this race, runners ran 20 lengths of the stadium. If the stadium measured 200 yards, how many yards were the Dolichos total? There you are! I've been looking all over for you. We did it! <laughs> well now, you needed a story. Traveling through the forest one day, Zena and Gabrielle came upon a man, bloody sword in hand, standing over the bodies of 
sweet day. I didn't kill these people. There was a man here with a sword. But you didn't do anything. The villagers saw me standing there covered with blood. Well, appearances aren't everything. That's why they have trials. If it comes to that, we'll just prove you didn't do it. That hooded assassin who did do it? He fights as well as I do. Maybe better. He's strong and fast, and then he just disappeared. Do you have any idea who it might have been? Maybe. Gabrielle, if anything happens to us and we get separated, I want you to get as far away from here as possible. What do you mean? What do you think is going to happen? Just do it. From Olympia, travel north to Thurman, home of Beatnickers, the poetic cyclops. <laughs> now, now, my young friend, don't be afraid. Never has a gentler creature existed. Unfortunately, he's a better storyteller than poet. Help him with his verse, and he'll tell you the next part of the story you seek. Horse, oh my sheep for a word that rhymes with a horse. A horse, a horse. What's another word that rhymes with a horse? Not much of a poet who can't even rhyme. Hello, come in. Well, you're just in time. Some help I need, if you please. I'll tell you the stories of Hercules or of Xena. That's what you need. But help me now, I beg you, please. I have four poems that need your time. To try as I might. I simply cannot rhyme. Take the scroll, you'll see what I mean. Not a single verse can I complete. A couplet is a two-line poem that rhymes. This poem is made up of three couplets put together. The letters on the left, A, A, B, B, C, C, tell you which lines should rhyme with each other. Drag the right words into the right places to help Beatnikus complete his poem. Fights. Injustices. Mind. Find. Side. Deeds. The warrior princess brilliantly fights The many injustices in her sight Xena foils her foes by using her mind No greater enemy will evil ever find A feisty young bard is at her side Gabrielle touts Xena's deeds with pride Yes, indeed, you're very good. I have another to fix, if you would. A Cinquain is a five-line poem with a total of 22 syllables. Instead of rhyming, Cinquain set the rhythm with the number of syllables on each line. The numbers on the left, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, tell you how many syllables belong on each line. Drag the right lines into the right place to help Beatnikus complete his poem. Queen. Trouble. Jealousy. Crazed. Hmm, some of the words don't seem to fit. Some look better, but that's not quite it. Loved. It's better than mine, that's for sure. But I think you need to help us more. Beware. Trouble. Hera. Queen of the gods. Troubled by Zeus and man. Her jealousy most destructive. Beware.
That's two down and two to go. You've got a knack for this, you know. A limerick is a five-line rhyming poem that is usually meant to be funny. The letters on the left, A, A, B, B, A, tell you which lines should rhyme with each other. Drag the right words into the right places to help Beatnikus complete his poem. Warriors. Exclusive. They. Was. Always. Always. Clothiers. Hmm, some of the words don't seem to fit. Some look better them. It's better than mine, that's for sure. Were. Hmm, some of the words don't seem to fit. Was. It's better than mine, that's for sure. But I think you need to help me some more. They. Clothiers. Hmm. Them. It's better than mine, that's for sure. Them. There are still a few blanks left to warriors. They. Were. It's better than mine, that's for sure. But I think you need to help us. Never. Hmm, some of the words don't seem to fit. Some look better, but that's not quite it. Was. It's better than mine, that's for sure. But I think you need to help us more. Always. Hmm, some of the words don't seem to fit. Some look better, but that's not quite it. Warriors. Never. It's better than mine, that's for sure. But I think you need to help us more. Where? Amazons were said to live on an island very exclusive. Female warriors of might. They were taught early to fight and always to be assertive. Well done, good show. Now here's one more. A three and one makes a total of four. Rhyming pattern poems have six lines of text arranged in a specific rhyming pattern. The letters on the left, A, B, A, B, C, C, tell you which lines should rhyme with each other. Drag the right words into the right places to help Beatnikus complete his poem. Ended. Began. Taken. Decree. Toy. Force. Denied. The Trojan War of 1250 BC began when Helen 
was taken to Troy. A war of ten years did the fates decree, until the Greeks retreated, leaving Troy. A large wooden horse hiding soldiers inside. The midnight attack, Trojan victory denied. My sheep are great. They love a good read. Now let me tell you the story you know. It wasn't long before Xena and Gabrielle were completely surrounded by the angry bull. What are you doing? It's quite a blow you took. I do have a throbbing headache. It's not my biggest worry right now. Why did you just give up? Why didn't you fight them? They're not warriors. Would have been a slaughter. Gabrielle, I told you to get away from here if anything happened. Save yourself. We're up against more than you know. I understand you may be feeling a little negative at the moment. You can't give in to that. Justice prevails. Well, that'd be nice. I'll get you out of here. No, Gabrielle. Leave. Get away what? from here. From Thurman, travel east to Delphi, home of the famous Oracle, and the home of Triacus' tomb. Once there, you must solve the puzzles on the two chamber doors to reach the great Megaron. Do this, and Triaca herself will be sure to reward you for your efforts. This simple jigsaw puzzle locks these doors up tight. Build the shape on the left, leaving no pieces on the right. Colors and shapes have their place on these turning dials. You must break their code.
welcome, young traveler. Welcome and well done. It is not every day that someone makes it all this way to see me. As you can see, I'm not as animated as I used to be. But my spirit lives on in this chamber, in this great Megaron. Uh, but you seem impatient. You want to hear about Hercules and Xena, hmm? That night, the hooded man Xena had battled appeared in her cell and magically unchained her. Xena wasn't surprised to learn that this man... And come with me, out of yourself, into what is wonderful. What do you see? Warriors. Thousands. And all of them yours. Trained, ready, willing to die if you command it. With an army like that, you could mold the world anew. Eradicate injustice. You can't tell me that all this holds no attraction. Even maybe a slight fascination. What's in it for you? The world at peace under a great leader. You. And to bring all this about, you need only call out my name. Call upon me to help you, and I shall be there instantly. I seriously doubt you're going to get a better offer. Just call for my help, Zena, and you'll hold the world. And you better hurry. That crowd doesn't seem as fond of you as I am. Behold, your former mentor and still greatest fan at your service. From Delphi, travel northeast to the Temple Maze at Demony Springs. When you arrive, proceed into the maze, choosing any route you wish. Find the scroll story to learn about a beast that once ran wild through the maze. Collect the images of the beast and place them on the temple wall. For this, the Temple Keeper will be forever in your debt. Most gods and godlings who lived on Mount Olympus treated the humans they ruled over with love and kindness. Unfortunately, Hera, the queen of the gods, acted nothing like this. She loved nothing more than to create awful creatures whose sole purpose was to make life miserable for mortals. One of the most infamous monsters she created was a three-headed snake-like creature known as a Hydra. One day, Hera sent the Hydra to live in a deep cavern inside a cave along the road to the village of Lerna. Travelers often used this cave as shelter while on their way to the village. Slowly, stories began reaching the village of people who had entered the well-known cave and never been seen again. Then farmers began complaining that their animals were disappearing in the middle of the night. Before long, the villagers realized that a terrible creature had made the streets of Lerna its hunting grounds. At about this same time, in another part of Greece, King Eurystheus gave Hercules the task of slaying Hera's three-headed pet. Hercules arrived at the cave and got to work. Careful to avoid the sharp fangs and spiked tail, Hercules deftly removed one of the creature's heads. Unfortunately, two more heads quickly grew in its place. Acting swiftly, Hercules grabbed a torch and used it to keep the heads from growing back. In a short time, the creature lay dead on the ground, making the streets of Lerna safe once again. In her grief over the loss of her prized Hydra, Hera created several more of the creatures, which she distributed across the lands of Greece to plague mankind forever. Who lived on Mount Olympus? Gods and godlings, birds and bunnies, trees and toads. 
What was a hydra? A three-headed dog-like creature. A monster created by the queen of the gods. A mean and ugly god. Why did the hydra live in a cave? Its creator sent it there to live. It was along the road that led to a village. It was a warm and safe place. What began happening to travelers who used the cave for shelter? They got wet because the cave had a leak. The hydra probably ate them. They became scared of the dark. How did the hydra harm farmers? It drank all of their crop water. It ate their farm animals. It took up residence in a deep cavern inside the cave. Why do you think Lerna became hunting grounds? Wild animals were plentiful. The hydra was venturing out of its cave to find animals and people to eat. It was clear that something was living in the cave. Why do you think Lerna became hunting grounds? Wild animals were plentiful. The hydra... One of Hercules' tasks was slaying the queen of the hydra. Avoiding sharp fangs and a spiked tail. Making the street... How did Hercules finally manage to kill the Hydra? He didn't. Hydras are still scattered throughout the lands of Greece. He used a flame to keep the heads from going back. He removed the creature's heads with his... Who's there? Oh, yes. Only a bard would come this far. You brought the tiles with you. Build the creature's picture on the temple wall. done your job well. Now for the story you seek. Outside the jailhouse, the villagers refused to rest until they had their revenge against the You're going to murder one. Why not murder two? And she's no murderer! In addition to the voices, there were the sounds of the fight itself. The swords clashing. But none of the men who died were carrying the swords. If you heard Cena fighting before you got there, who was she fighting? When the rest of you showed up, she could have killed you too. No witnesses. Now why didn't she do that? Nobody here cares that she didn't kill anyone. Nobody cares that she was only trying to help. Nobody believes that she fought the real murderer. All you care about is executing someone. I'd have run away too. So would you. From Demini, travel down to the sea and find Ariana, captain of the Island Runner. She will tell you what she knows of Hercules and Xena, for a price, of course. To earn your tale, you must act as her navigator and safely guide her boat to the island of Quijos. A strong command of the winds will assure your safe passage. Welcome aboard the Island Runner, Bart. Beautiful, isn't she? My father, may he find rest in the Elysian Fields, left her to me when he died. Hmm, you seem a bit young to navigate a boat such as this, but your mentor assures me you can get the job done.
Our destination is the island of Chios, three days to the east. The sea god Poseidon will show us the way to go by marking our destination for each day we are at sea. Your job as navigator is to plot the ship's course to the sea god. Whoa! Well done, young bard, or should I call you Navigator? That's some of the finest navigation I've seen, and I've seen the best. Now, get a good night's sleep, and we'll tackle the second leg tomorrow. Whoa! Careful there, sailor! Well done, young bard! Or should I call you Navigator? Another great day on the waters, Navigator. Tomorrow, the last leg to Kiel. See you in the morning! Well done, young bard. Or should I call you Navigator? Ah, always good to be back in port. You did a top-notch job, just like a seasoned pro. Well, now, I promised you a tale. Xena knew that Ares would see to it that the villagers found her guilty of the murders. Determined to beat the god at his own game, Xena called out to... Aries. Oh, I'm not back yet. Only if they find me guilty. I wouldn't have bothered killing those village fools if I didn't know they would find you guilty. You did all this just to get me back. I'm flattered. Well, if I'm going to be your warrior again. No, not just my warrior. You'll be the architect of a new world. My kind of world. Where force of arms keeps the peace and one great warrior queen rules. You're irresistible. But I suppose you already know that. I'll have to have a new army. Whatever you want, whomever you want. The most legendary fighters in history, if you'd like. Hector, Achilles, Agamemnon? They're long gone. I am Ares, god of war. For you, I'll bring them back and anyone else you desire. Anyone? I just want to be sure of the deal. Anyone you name. As long as I have your word. You have my word. Once you have proven your worth to Ariana, have her take you to the trading islands of Noxos, Mykonos, and Delos. One of the traders owns the final piece of your story, the sacred scroll of Hera, but he will not likely part with it cheaply. Travel between the islands, trading as you go, 
until you have what you need to trade for the scroll. Here is a complete list of the goods we have on board. I offer them now to you to trade for what you seek. Good luck, and may Hermes, the god of commerce, guide your way. Welcome, stranger. Everything's fresh this morning. Let me know what you like. Ah, the scroll is what you're after then, eh? That's a very famous item around here. I'll trade it to you, but it'll cost you plenty, I can tell you that. Here's my offer. See you next time, friend. Haven't seen you before. What do you need? Long reach. Good control. Centaurs know their spears, believe me. Of course, you gotta pay for the best. Yeah, okay. See ya. Welcome to the Naxos Emporium. Please allow me to be of any assistance you may need. This jewelry box is unlike any I've ever seen. The wood is scented and fills the room with a heavenly scent. This is the best price. Leaving so soon? Take care and come back soon. Hello, friend. Let me know what you like and I'll see what I can do for you. Those nuts are grown out back. Best in the islands. A fair price I ask for them. A good trade, friend. Good seas and fair winds, friend. Ah, welcome back. Let me know if I can help you find anything. This jewelry box is unlike any I've ever seen. The wood is scented and fills the room with a heavenly scent. This is the best price. It's always a pleasure doing business with someone who appreciates the finest quality. Thank you. Farewell. Visit us again soon. Back again, huh? Long reach. Good control. Centaurs know their spears, believe me. Of course, you gotta pay for the best. Looks good to me. But if I find anything missing, you better be looking over your shoulder. See you next time, I guess. Good to see you again. Gotten a little sun on the water, I see. Let me know what you like. Ah, the scroll is what you're after then, eh? That's a very famous item around here. I'll trade it to you, but it'll cost you plenty, I can tell you that. Here's my offer. A deal's a deal, friend. The scroll is yours. Guard it well, friend. Well played, my dear. Your choice was totally wrong, of course, but... Even as an adversary, you are one of a kind. I know my choice was the right one for me. In that case... Until next time. Guilty. You said I could have anyone I name. I call on you to send forth the following protectors. The good and innocent men of this village, Polinius. Doricles and Ariolus. With the last piece of the puzzle in your possession, it's time to travel back to Athens in the Academy, where you will write down what you have learned. Complete the scroll and place your name across the top for all to see. Hello, hello! Ha! It's very good to see you again. You made it in one piece, I see. <laughs> very good, very good. Hey, quickly now, go and restore the scroll. 
I can hardly wait to see the completed work. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't interfere with your work too much. Proceed, young bard, proceed. <laughs> Dead men. Head. Men. Traveling through the forest one day, Zena and Gabrielle came upon a man standing over the bodies of three dead men, bloody sword in hand. Jumping to action, Zena drew her sword and began fighting the hooded killer until suddenly he vanished into thin air. Zena stood shaking her head in disgust when several people from the nearby village arrived at the bloody scene. Seeing Zena standing over the men, they immediately believed that she had killed their loved ones and vowed their revenge. On Horseback Villagers Familiar Zena and Gabrielle quickly escaped on horseback riding for an hour straight until they were sure they were well ahead of the mob. While resting, Zena warned Gabrielle not to take the threats of the villagers lightly. She knew that the desire for revenge could make a killer out of anyone. As she searched for a way to prove her innocence, Zena thought back on the mysterious killer she had battled. There seemed something very familiar about him, she thought. But you didn't do anything. The villagers saw me standing there covered with blood. A daring escape. Friend. Anger. It wasn't long before Zena and Gabrielle were completely surrounded by the angry villagers again. They tried a daring escape on horseback. But when the villagers captured Gabrielle, Zena quickly surrendered, fearing her friend would be hurt. Gabrielle screamed out in anger as Zena fell to the ground, knocked unconscious by an angry farmer. What are you doing? <laughs> Zena! Anger. Prison cell. Stood. Surrendered. Dark Force. Innocence. Later, Zena awoke inside a prison cell, stripped of her armor and locked in chains. Gabrielle stood nearby, worried for her friend. She could not understand why Zena had surrendered so easily. Zena explained that she had sensed a dark force at work in the village. She tried to convince Gabrielle to leave the village when it was still possible, but it was no use. Gabrielle refused to go anywhere until she had proven Zena's innocence to the villagers. Cell. Surprised. Zena. Abandoned. That night, the hooded man Zena had battled appeared in her cell and magically unchained her. Zena wasn't surprised to learn that this man was none other than Ares, the god of war. Zena had once served this bloodthirsty god, but abandoned him when she discovered his true heartless nature. Behold, your fault. Castle. God. Peace and harmony. Peace and harmony. Disappeared. An evil way. Peace and harmony. The pajamas. Peace and harmony. Ares took Xena by the hand. And in a flash, they were magically transported far away from the jail cell 
and into his distant castle, appealing to her sense of decency, the sinister god, promised Xena that together they could rule the world in peace and harmony. All she had to do was call out his name, and she would become his warrior queen. Then, as quickly as she had disappeared from the cell, she was back again, left to think over Ari's offer. Revenge against Trial Crowd Outside the jailhouse, the villagers refused to rest until they had their revenge against the warrior princess. Unwilling to wait for the trial, they dragged Xena out into the street with plans to kill her. Gabrielle rushed after them and begged the villagers to give Xena a fair trial. In the end, Gabrielle prevailed, and the crowd reluctantly agreed to hear Xena's side of the story. You're going to murder... Sword Story Murderer Innocence Revenge The next day at the trial, Gabrielle told the story of the hooded man with the bloodied sword they had met on the road that fateful day. The villagers dismissed her story as a lie, saying they had never seen such a man. The fact that Zena had fled the scene proved that she was the true murderer, they claimed. Gabrielle began to realize that the villagers weren't interested in Zena's guilt or innocence. They were solely interested in avenging the deaths of their loved ones, and that only through Zena's death would their revenge be complete. In addition to the voice of the fight itself, the swords clashing. Game. Delighted. Plan. Xena knew that Ares would see to it that the villagers found her guilty of the murders. Determined to beat the god at his own game, Xena called out to him in her cell that night. Ares was delighted to hear that she was ready to make a deal. His diabolical plan was working after all, he mused. Ares. Castle. Clear. Agreed to. Blood. In an instant, she found herself transported back to Ares' castle. Her deal was simple. If the villagers found her guilty, she agreed to become his queen. However, she wanted to make it clear that she could call on anyone, living or dead, to man her army. Ares quickly agreed to her demands. Already drunk with the smell of blood, he would soon be spilling with Xena at his side once again. Blood Verdict Smile Warrior princesses Lives A kiss the next morning, the villagers marched the chain Xena from the cell house to hear the verdict read. Guilty, with a mischievous smile on her face, she demanded Ares bring to life the very three villagers she had been convicted of murdering. Impressed with the warrior princess's cunning, he granted her wish. The three men immediately jumped to Xena's defense, telling the story of a hooded murderer and of her daring attempt to save their lives, just as Gabrielle had said. Amused with Xena's clever manipulation, Ares blew her a kiss and vanished into thin air. Secret World Wits On their journey home, Gabrielle tried to understand exactly what had happened. Sharing her Secret, Xena told her of Ares' attempt to fool her into joining forces with him and take over the world, even though Xena had succeeded in using her wits to outsmart the god of war this time. She was sure they hadn't seen the last of him. No, Xena thought, not by a long shot. Well played, my dear. 
Your choice was totally wrong, of course, but... Magnificent! Magnificent! You've outdone yourself again, my friend. Now, it gives me great pleasure to honor you with this certificate. You've earned it, my young friend. Magnificent! Magnificent! You've outdone yourself again, my friend. Now, it gives me great pleasure to honor you with this certificate. You've earned it, my young friend. If you exit now, you will lose your progress in this activity. Are you sure you want to exit the journey? If you exit now, you will lose your progress in this activity. Are you sure you want to exit the journey? <laughs>